Oh, hello. Come in, come in. Have a look. I'll show you around my studio. Okay, so this is my studio where I create all of my characters. So um, I think we'll start with the characters start really with costume. Um, once I get the costume on, I'm able to to do these characters. So here we have we have Hatter's hat. Hatter's hat, which is too big for me um, until I put the wig on. I bought it one year for winter magic. If you're anywhere in New South Wales, Sydney-ish area, you probably know um, Katoomba has an annual winter solstice festival, at least until we got COVIDed out. And so that was that was what that was for. But um, Hatta came about because I wanted to do something for April Fool's Day. And I thought, oh, hoaxes and, and the Mad Hatter. And the Mad Hatter's costume, which was over here, Mad Hatter's costume, to go with the hat, is based and and the look and the makeup is based very much on Freddie Mercury's look in the Queen um, video clip, I'm Going Slightly Mad. So there's Hatter. We also have over here we've got Laura Trevelyan and her pith helmet. She started out exploring history but um, she has now branched out into Australian literature because I had read a whole lot and I'd written an essay. I spent three years reading only Australian literature and I thought, well, actually, people don't know this stuff very well, so let's go explore that. And so she's a, a sort of a 20s, 30s explorer, sort of a, I like to think she's got a sort of an Agatha Christie vibe, um, sort of a, you know, um, Poirot in Syria type of thing, um, or Egypt or somewhere, sort of a Tutankhamun thing. Um, we also have, so that's that's Laura's costume um, on her lapel that you can hopefully see. She has a little bodicea. So, and, and I love this, the wheel moves. The little wheel on her chariot moves. So she's got a little bow to see her on her lapel. Um, the, the best costumes, obviously, belong to our two aristocratic ladies. I'll show you her ladyships in a moment. Uh, there's this, this one. But Her Infernal Majesty has some of the best costumes. This one is Her Infernal Majesty's big black watch Stuart Tartan punk jacket, bespoke made, absolutely bespoke made. Um, she has on her buttons, she has apples. So apples, we could call them pomegranates, but apples. People, uh, the thing about Her Infernal Majesty, she started out as um, sort of a, a, a devil with the seven deadly sins of writing. But, and she had a counterpart. She had her upstairs. But as she developed, she's developed a lot more of her personality and She's more than just a devil. She did explain the whole logic behind her her world, which is there was a change in management and they started getting the bad stuff. This is her winter coat, which I shall be wearing for the next video. It is from Prague. It is from a shop called Dracula's Clothing. And it, it, it was 
it was my winter coat. It is now her Infernal Majesty's winter coat because it's too big for me now. She wears it as a dress. But um, she did start out really as a one-off character, but as things went along and as the characters took over the channel, because it, it did start out at one point as a perfectly normal, reasonable ch channel, um, she, of course, needed more of a, a thing and she couldn't just spend her entire time criticising things and then having her upstairs um, just re debate that. So I have rather retired her upstairs because her Infernal Majesty discovered Shakespeare and now spends a good long time mangling Shakespeare. This is another piece of her Infernal Majesty's costume with the fishnet. She has a lot more costumes than anyone else. Her Infernal Majesty loves clothes, loves dressing up, and she is probably the only one without a strict uniform, though, as you can see, she has a theme. She's black and red. Black and red is her Infernal Majesty. Um, we also have Janice, who has... He, she's, she's one of the most recent characters. She's the hippie. So she has this lovely pink velvet dress and she also has some nice she has some nice pieces nice hippie-ish clothes that I can layer on top of each other for her so those those go for Janice but really my favorite is her infernal majesty when it comes to the costume she also has the worst 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 costume to put on and I will show you a reason for that in a moment. Okay so over here we have um, this is my cabinet of wonders. Um, this is where I keep all my props and all my equipment and this is the reason I will show you the reason why her infernal majesty is nightmarish and it's not the horns. It's these little bastards. These, she has claws. She has claws and there is something weird about my hands that means that they don't like glue, they don't like nail polish, they strip things off, they will strip cheap plating off rings and so I spend a great deal of time, they're the last thing that goes on. I sit in my living room, put sticking nails on I have to make sure the camera's all set and everything ready to go because you can't do much once you've got these things on. Even the horns are on before I um, do the nails. But and then and then they start falling off. So if you see her infernal majesty sort of pressing on her fingers, that's to keep her nails on. <laughs> so that is the thing that makes her infernal majesty the worst costume great character I love doing her but she has the worst costume for that reason I mean her ladyship wears a corset and it's not as bad as her infernal majesty's nails so down here not that one this one here we have her ladyship's underwear so her ladyship has a big she actually has two corsets but I've started wearing this one under the new dress so she she actually wears these are just um mass produced cheapy corsets i put new lacing in the back they're not something you would want to wear for long periods of time but for the short amount of time that i spend doing a video they're all right um so because her ladyship actually needs you need to get the right shape under her ladyship otherwise her dresses will look just wrong they'll just look completely wrong um so that's one of her corsets this one is her other corset i put that under some of her dresses but under the new scottish one the black one goes really well it all depends on who can what can you see um her infernal majesty has one there is more of her infernal majesty's clothes in here she has fishnet gloves she has this lovely black and gold dress i think it's the only one that doesn't follow the black and red it's black and gold 
um, she's got this lacy top and she's got this corset that if you saw the um, Midsummer's Night Dream, the Christmas video, I managed to have both corset and nails. That was one hell of a job. So those are, that's where her Infernal Majesty keeps her clothes. As I said, she has lots of clothes. Um, speaking about her Infernal Majesty, these are her horns. A bit dusty. I haven't filmed anything with her. And if people are wondering, she is coming back. She just takes a great deal of effort to, um, to film. She's, um, her videos are very long because they're, they're, shape, they're explaining the Shakespeare and um, they just take quite some time because I have to watch, I try to watch at least two versions and then I have to work out a way for her to mangle them and then I have to work out a way for her to relate them to her crazy ass family because her infernal majesty is not the devil, as some people may have thought, but her infernal majesty, the reason why we never say her name is this is an ancient Roman tradition because they were terrified of her. Her infernal majesty is her infernal majesty, Queen Persephone of Hades. And one never actually mentions her by name in case you attract her attention. She was also known as the cruel one. She was they, they were more frightened of her than they were of Hades. So... We don't we don't mention her name, but that's who she is. She she I, I try to drop enough clues that her her brothers and cousins are all the same. Her, her brothers and sisters are also her cousins because she's the daughter of Demeter, who she calls her smother, and Zeus, and she's married to her uncle husband, Hades. So I try to put in enough clues that that's what she is and I hope that people pick up on that but there you go now you know she is who she is and um, these are her ladyship's wigs which I will not um, take down because they are very delicate and I don't like to do anything other than use them when I'm actually putting them on this one is full of flour hairspray and flour um, and this is the one that I wear. I'm wearing this one with the Scottish dress because she's going traveling. So she's got more, her more practical hair. This one is the hair that what is, it's the white, it's the very high. This is her court hair when she went to Europe, got a, herself a robe à la française and she got herself posh court hair. So her ladyship is, um, I like to think of her, she's a rich widow. So she has plenty of money, plenty of time. And so she's, she's just enjoying herself. She doesn't have to worry about anything particularly. So she travels and she reads books and she hosts the literary salons. So she's very, very chic is her ladyship um she's also possibly one of the best behaved of the characters because none of them are terribly well behaved hatter's all right hatter hatter's very childish um in here we have all the rest of my wigs here is her infernal majesty not her ladyship i was just talking about her ladyship here is janice um here's hatter here is Laura. This is one that I haven't used yet. And this one is, this used to be her upstairs. So her upstairs is officially retired. Um, this is going to be a new character who's coming a little later in the year. So we'll, I'll, I'll let you know about her later. So that's a little sneaky peek of that. Um, so the last thing to show you is over this way. Finally, here are a couple of her ladyship's dresses. Here is her Scottish dress. Um, she does actually have panniers underneath so that it sits out right. You don't see it on camera, but it really does help 
when I put the dresses on to have the have the corset and have the right undergarments underneath and they are full 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 dresses they're not um they're not part partly made they they are a full full dress and this one is the Robella Francaise um it doesn't have the big back on it because frankly you weren't going to see the big back so it seemed a waste of fabric but this one is made very costumey we've got the big skirt the um paneers go under that and then to make this easier to get on this is all because we're not actually in costume here we're just uh we're just wearing costumes so that one makes that just less of a nightmare to get on by having it press that up so it's more more like a costume than a they're not historical dress i'm not pretending to be historical dress ever and these are just these are just wonderful in terms of being able to put some put them on something and as you can see i green screen everything which makes some colors really difficult i you will have noticed that her ladyship's other dress is sort of greeny and the colour correcting that goes into making sure she doesn't look like an 18th century ghost is astonishing. So I have now learned, do not wear anything in the green spectrum at all. Um, you may have noticed one of Janice's videos, her top was green underneath and I had a devil making sure that that didn't look transparent and project her background onto it. So um, I think there's one other thing that I, I did want to show you. And that is, oh, that is this. And I'm not entirely certain what I'm going to use this for. I did use it once. This is, I'm not sure who's going to get this. We haven't worked that one out that far. But these are vintage master's robes. They're real academic robes. And um, I saw them in, they've got the, the proper hood and the robe and there is a mortarboard. And I saw these in a secondhand shop. I just, I, I, I had to get them. I just thought you're gorgeous and I am actually entitled to wear them as opposed to some little Harry Potter trash and I could not bear for these beautiful things to get turned into Harry Potter cosplay. So um, the master's robes will come out at some point. Look, they're, they're full, full robes. They're vintage robes. They're from, I think they're from the 40s or 50s. Uh, they are made it by David Jones. From They're from Sydney someone down in Sydney University, I think. Um, I'm not sure what is going to happen with them, but they will turn up at some point. Um, yeah, I just couldn't bear for them to become Harry Potter costume. Anyway, that is, that is my studio. And so I think next we will pop along and have a look at my office where the other half of Black Cocky Press happens. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute. So here we are in the office. This is where I am filming or editing and it's where I'm writing. There's a book on the desk there. And so we're going to have a little look in here. This is a very big desk. It is a double-sided desk, as you can see. There is two chairs, two sides, twice the work. So coming in here, here we have the uh, one of my many bookcases. This one has my... Sorry, I'm just about to drop it light on myself this one has my 20s tarts so i've got my tardis got my jeremy fisher and over here we have one of my books planned out i like to use a cork board to plan out what i'm going to be doing 
So that one is a non-fiction book that is coming and should be finished before the end of the year. And if we go in here further, past Jeremy Fisher, hello Jeremy Fisher, this is another book, a novel that I have no idea when it's going to be finished, but it will. It is a sort of a companion book to my first book, Poisoning the Nest. So Poisoning the Nest ends in 1917, and this one picks up same town, 1925. Some of the characters will carry across in as sub-characters, but the main characters and the narrative is completely different. Over here, we have my Master of Arts from Swinburne University. I won't pretend that everybody has one of those. That is, I'm very proud of that. So I am a master. And we have a couple of, bit of other artwork on the walls here. And down, this is where all the all the editing happens. This is over here. This is Phoebe. Phoebe is sits on my desk to tell me about the 1920s. She's a carnival prize. Over here, we have my big working bookcase. Up the top, we have a bunny with wings because bunny with wings, I mean, seriously, bunny with wings. But along here, we have a lot of my working books, a lot of my nonfiction. There are Dickensian villains. There is Mrs. Gamp. There is Bill Sykes. We have Mr. Bumble. And we have Mr. Pecksniff. And we have a whole bunch of Shakespeare and various other things down here. Here are her ladyship's books. Further along, we have poetry. Down here, these are books for Janice. And we have more poetry over here. Over here, and I'm not sure how well you're going to see this little bookcase, but this one has more books for Janice and some books for our new character. So that is really everything that I have to show you behind the scenes. Thank you for joining us. And I will see you again, or rather, I won't see you. I won't see you. But um, the characters will see you again next week. So check them out. Her Infernal Majesty is coming up with another video very soon. I just have not had a chance to do one of them, but she is coming along with a video very soon. So if you're waiting for her, she is coming. Anyway, I'm going to leave you there and I hope you enjoyed this little behind the scenes vlog with all the characters who live in Spare Oom. So bye bye. If you would like to support this channel, come across to the Black Cocky Press website www.blackcockypress.com.au where you will find books and other materials to help with your writing.